All right, here we are. Now we're going to move into a bit more actual detail with the code in Mapbox GLJS. Now, you do have to have a pretty decent understanding of JavaScript uh, to come along with me here. Um, you'll be able to muddle through even if you don't, just by copy-pasting different things from examples and uh, all the stuff that you'll find around online with Mapbox GLJS. But ultimately, for it all to really make sense why things are happening the way they are, it's going to help a lot if you do know some JavaScript. That being said, I'm going to try to keep it a little less, um, not, not too complex. When we get into some of the interface stuff with events and really working with uh, large data, um, that's where it's going to be, you know, real crunch time, where if you're going to be working with events, you're going to have to understand JavaScript. But just for the sake of styling and some basic layer stuff, I think we'll be able to make it through um, without that. But, you know, it's going to be code, so you have to be prepared for seeing code. Anyway, let's uh, talk a little bit about layers. So we touched on layers a little bit uh, last time. I don't know why I have this picture here. It is completely unrelated. I think it's a stock one. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, anyway, we're going to talk about layers. We can pretend like we're talking about it like this, and this person's very interested. Uh, we added a layer last time, so we went to uh, one source, like a tile set. So that's all pretty confusing, as you saw last time. There's tile sets, there's data sets, there's GeoJSONs, there's layers, there's styling, and then where there's like we have to add the styles, but we also have to add the layers, and it's it's all very confusing. I'm gonna try to clear it up for you and just make it clear what's actually going on. It took me quite a long time to wrap my head around it, and we'll uh, go through different um, layers, layer types, uh, just the same way we did in Studio. So we kind of went over points, we went over fills and lines and all these different things. We'll pretty much go over that. Again, we're not going to go into every detail of them. We're not going to go over them um, to the max. But I want you to see, you know, generally how you'd be able to figure things out on your own if uh, you want to do something specific. So uh, just like in Mapbox Studio, these layers are going to be able to be styled <coughs> um, with all the same properties. Uh, you know, the width of the lines and the opacity of the lines, and you can do it by zoom level, and you can also hide and show features uh, specifically uh, from layers in GLJS. Uh, you can do all kinds of, you can do all the same styling, plus making it interactive and dynamic, basically. So we're going to talk a little bit about filters as we go through. We're also going to talk uh, regularly about the issues with re using this approach that Mapbox GLJS has which is to use rendered features as opposed to some static file that uh, that we'd be using if we were using leaflet or something where we just would load a GeoJSON or something like that. Okay, so let's head out and we will look at um, our maps and remember where we were here. So we have this uh, just this basic shape here that we drew and we imported custom as a layer directly from a GeoJSON. So we didn't actually have to query any kind of layer in the Mapbox Studio stuff itself. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We saw that we could load a GeoJSON in like this. So what's actually happening here? Well, when we add source, what we're doing is we're mimicking um, as though we had made a data set in Mapbox, or something similar to that tile set slash data set, a source of information. So that's what it means by source. That's your real basic um, the actual hard data that's behind what you're going to display. The layer is more of the layer is, is the section that's actually going to be interactive and showing on the site. It's the front end of the data. And that's why you had to have to add both. You're not just adding a layer um, and putting this putting the information for its coordinates directly into it. This is just an, a way to kind of filter the particular source that you made. So for every layer, you do have to have a source. And there's a few ways to refer to the source. Most often you're going to actually put it directly here. The source is National Park. You can see I also put the source as natural, National Park here. And you can see that that is the same name I gave to the source right at the beginning. So let's head to the Mapbox API just before we actually start getting into every type of it because it's really crucial that we kind of understand this. Um, we're going to spend this first video just going over a little, uh, some of the ways you can actually just add sources, add layers, how do you get it from Mapbox, all that stuff, before we go into the styling. So, 
let's uh, head in here. We'll go add source. I know where that is. So we see it says ID and then the source. Okay. And now the source object, right? We're here in the Mapbox GLJS API um, documentation. So we have a string for that. That's this ID that we can make up ourselves, right? And then the source object conforming to the styles. Okay, so the source definition. So we can click on that and then we see it comes down to here. We can see where it is. This is a source, Mapbox Streets. You can see there's different types next to them. So we have a, a type and a data in our case. So here you can see it says type and then there's different tiles and a max zoom. So there's some different types of, in, of um, sources you can actually add. They aren't always going to be GeoJSONs. They might be vector, right? Now you're often, this is, this is something you may be doing often, um, using URL. There's also raster. So there is a lot of different ways to specify this. So why don't we change our source uh, into something else and we'll get rid of some of these current layers. So we'll just change it to do one of map boxes that they talk about here. So here we have, um, it looks like we can put in a type of vector. We'll keep it as national part. No, we'll change it to map box streets. So the data will be here. Is that what they called it? No, nope, the URL. So make sure you do that. And we will just call it map box streets. Okay, so now we'll have a source. And that's there, that's great. Now let's see if there's anything that is on it that is a fill. We'll just add it. Uh, just so we can maybe see something, and we'll see how that turns out. We'll get rid of this filter for now. Okay, let's just see what happens. Park boundary must specify a source layer. So you can see here, actually, since it's a vector, the layer uh, needs to specify inside of Mapbox streets exactly which layer. So when we were using the GeoJSON, we could just refer to the whole GeoJSON, pass it into the layer, and boom, there we go. But now since we're trying to style something particular, we need to actually find the layer in that source. So this is part of the difference between the different kinds of data sources we can use. Again, if it's a GeoJSON, it will just split it up by itself and you'll be able to add the layer. And if it's a fill, it will draw the fill. But if it's um, a vector, then you do need to specify a sublayer. And that sublayer could also have multiple types of uh, geometry theoretically, and it would be able to style them, but you just need to add some extra stuff to specify it. So you can see all layers that use a vector source must specify a source layer value. So that's going to go in here, source-layer. We're going to add, we have to find out what it actually is. So let's go to the tile set, because again, we are referencing a specific tile set here, v6. Okay, so why don't we update it to v7, since that's the one that's showing here. All right, now we have all kinds of layers. We have admin, arrow, airport, blah, 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 so many different ones. We have country labels, house numbers. So is there anything that we can just style that we're going to be able to see with relative ease? Maybe roads, waterways. Um, why don't we go with road? And uh, we can then, then put in here source layer, road, and then we're not going to have a fill anymore. Let's see if they say what exactly it is. No. <clears throat> well, it'd be a line. So we will now change that to line color and we'll make it something um, something we'll be able to actually tell. Maybe a bright pink. All right. There's one. Why not? So you got to be able to see what it is and make the fill opacity one. And it won't be. It'll be line opacity. Okay. So this is all a little funny, but let's see how it turns out. Right, do we get an error first of all? No error. Okay. Oh, line line opacity, that's not gonna help. Let's do that instead. Alright, zooms in. There we go. No errors. Looks good. And then we scroll in a bit. And when do we start to get some streets? There we are. There's our streets. So we just got added um, our street layer. Pretty much no problem. So that's kinda cool. We we literally did not have that information in this map. It was not loaded in um, from the map itself, but from a separate layer here in our Mapbox streets. So that's really nice to be able to have.